this video, I'm going to show you how to speed build industrial walkways for your tabletop wargaming. I'm going to build not one, not two, but 10 of these in the span of a weekend. These work well in Warhammer 40,000, Necromunda, or even sci-fi or modern themed D&D campaigns. Coupled with some other terrain pieces to introduce elevation, they add a lot of accessibility and multiple routes to get from point A to point B. With the use of magnets and flexible endpoints, these platforms can serve as ramps to any elevation, so don't be stressed that you didn't line up your buildings exactly or have different height platforms. These let you bridge the gap seamlessly. I'll be going over how I built them and some little quick tricks to get them looking awesome once painted up. I start with a three inch wide piece of chipboard and I cut off one inch segments from each end. Next, I cut out some thin sheet metal to glue on top. This will serve as a way to make the piece very rigid and it allows me to use magnets to stick on top of the platform. Be careful when hot gluing the sheet metal as it transfers heat really fast and can burn you. I then tape the two one inch strips to each end. These will be our flexible attachment points. The tape connection lets this be a flexible joint. I'll be calling these the end points from now on. I just use masking tape here, but you can use any tape you have lying around. Make sure it's stuck down really well. Taking some thin strips of chipboard cut down to three inch lengths, I cut out four per walkway. These are gonna go on the bottom of the endpoints like this. Taking some neodymium magnets and keeping the polarity consistent, I had two per endpoint. These go on the bottom in between the two pieces of chipboard we added earlier. To make sure the magnets don't fall out of the hot glue, I add another layer of tape and make it wrap around so it gives a good hold on the magnets. This makes up the rough structure of the walkway, and from here, let's decorate it in several different ways. The main idea I'm going to go with is cutting out some chipboard strips, as well as some cereal box, and using drywall mesh tape as a great texture going across the middle. You can also make it look like the top is paneled instead. To make the railing, I'm using this quarter inch chicken wire mesh from the hardware store. I got this tip from Dark Matter Workshop's YouTube channel. They work really well for railing at this scale. To glue them onto the side, I'll be using a piece of chipboard and sandwiching the bottom of the railing in the middle with hot glue. Eric's Hobby Workshop has a video on doing walkways in a similar way, which is where I picked up this tip. Testing the height with some miniatures, I think I made this one a bit short but it's fine depending on the scale of model used. I only added railings to one side and left the other one simple. Just clad it with a chipboard piece. We'll be decorating this later. I picked up this pack of stick-on gemstones from the dollar store, and the small ones make for good rivets. This is quite tedious, so use it sparingly. Speed building 10 of these was interesting, and I ended up going with a more common pattern by the end of it. Just one strip of mesh tape down the middle and a limited amount of cross braces uh, to make the walkways a bit different. I made the walkways of various lengths to match whatever configuration I may want to set up. Some of them I duplicate in case I want to put them side by side to make a wider walkway. If you're enjoying the video so far, please leave a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this in the future. I ran out of Mod Podge halfway through making these. So I decided to use some of this oil-based spray primer to seal the rest of the pieces. It worked out really well. I need to do some further testing to see the properties of the stuff compared to Mod Podge, but it's definitely cheaper by volume, I think. It smells pretty bad, so I had to apply it in the garage and kept it well ventilated. For the color scheme, I base coated in gray, then came in with a brown on all the parts that were graded, as well as the untextured bottoms. Having a blow dryer is handy to speed up the build in between coats. I then came in with a dark blue on all the cross braces. Uh, this is more to match the rest of my industrial terrain. Then coming in with a metallic silver and bronze, I dry brushed in all the railings and cross braces to give the look of chipped paint over a metal body, uh, as well as most of the graded areas to bring out the pattern. 
with some orange paint on a sponge, I dabbed it to randomly give the appearance of rust and then applied a wash along the sides and stippled across to give a dirty look. Uh, the wash is made from black ink and water and a bit of uh, matte medium. Instead of painting on the hazard stripes, I decided to print off this pattern on my color printer. I'll include a PDF of it on my Patreon for those of you that want to support the channel. It's going to be the post from the last week of December 2020. You can also just Google images of hazard striping and make your own. It's pretty simple. These look pretty convincing once glued on with some PVA glue, and they can be weathered and blended in with some washes and dry brushing metal on the edges. After all that, I think I'll go back on some of my other terrain pieces and add hazard striping to places that make sense. If you want to see some more terrain from this set, take a look at some of these other videos. See you around.